Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today's Friday. We made it to the end of the week and looking forward to the weekend. I hope your Friday's going well today. I hope everything's going well with you and your family. And uh, thank you for spending the next few moments with us as we uh, continue our journey through the book of 1 Thessalonians. We're currently in chapter number two and uh, excited to share a couple of verses of scripture with you uh, this afternoon. And I uh, just want to uh, remind folks about this weekend. Uh, as as Friday comes, we're excited uh, many times if, you're, uh, if your work week is Monday through Friday uh, for the weekend. In fact, I stopped uh, this morning and, and went in Exxon and the lady that was helping me and, and um, ring up the things I was purchasing. She said, uh, I said, how are you doing? She said, what's well, Friday? And so she was excited about uh, Friday and coming as we often are. And so we're, some people get excited because of the week is behind them, but we as Christians should be excited about what's before us when Friday comes, and that's Sunday. And I'm excited about this Sunday. Uh, and of course, it is the Lord's Day, and, and we're excited uh, to, to gather to worship Him. But this Sunday is a very important Sunday. Uh, it is our Faith Promise Sunday. It is Missions Sunday. We're going to have an emphasis on our missions we're going to have several videos from the uh, some missionaries that we currently support, uh, giving us updates about uh, what's been God's been, how God's been working in their lives and in their ministries um, while they're on the field, and then also we'll have one of our missionaries that we support will be with us and he'll he'll give us an update, and uh, but uh, also uh, Pastor Fred Christian uh, will be with us to deliver the message and challenge us in this area uh, of missions giving, faith promise missions giving. Be with us Sunday morning and Sunday night. And so it's going to be a wonderful, a wonderful day, uh, special music, and uh, just a very important day. Last year, this time last year, we had to cancel our uh, Faith Promise Missions uh, Conference. We had a conference, uh, Missions Revival schedule, multi-day revival, and uh, we had to cancel because of uh, that was the, uh, the uh, beginning of the pandemic, and we were online only. But so thankful that the Lord's allowed us is uh, going to allow us to have this uh, missions uh, Sunday emphasis, and uh, I hope you'll be here. I hope you plan to be here. I hope you'll bring everyone in your family. It's going to be a great time. The heartbeat of God is missions, and uh, it's a very important day. And so I'm excited, as you can tell, about this Sunday. Be be in your place this coming Sunday. Uh, let's let's come. We're still all wearing masks and still uh, doing all those things and. And uh, many of our, our population in our church has been vaccinated, so praise the Lord for that. Those especially in that high risk, high risk category. So we thank we thank the Lord for all that and uh, all of His goodness and, and watching us uh, faithfully watching over us this past year. So I encourage you to be in church this coming Sunday. Now let's get to the devotion today. Uh, um, we're going to look at two verses as I mentioned earlier. And it's verse number 11 and verse number 12. And Paul is talking, of course, to the church at Thessalonica. And he has been talking about some uh, some things and defending his, his ministry. And now let's notice verse uh, 11 and verse number 12. Paul said, As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. Here he's he's already portrayed himself as, as a, uh, back in, um, uh, if I can find the verse, at verse number 7, uh, as a nurse chairs her, her children. He talked about how he came to me and was gentle with those uh, believers, those that had come to know Christ as their Savior, as, as Paul had brought the gospel to them. Uh, now he's comparing himself as a father. He says, he says three things that I've done when I, when I was there. Remember, he spent three Sabbath days or three weeks with them. He said, first of all, I exhorted you. The word really means, that word really uh, in the Greek means to, to bring alongside, to speak with. And he said, I exhorted you. And then he said, I comforted you. And he was a cheerleader for him. He was an encourager. He, he, he exhorted them uh, to continue. As we'll look at the message in verse number 12, what the message was, what, what he exhorted them to do. But he was encouraging them as new believers. And then he goes on to say, not only that, not only did he exhort, not only did he comfort, but he also charged them. He charged them. What did he charge them? As a father, but there's verse 12. Here was the message. Here's what he exhorted, comforted, and charged them in. That ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. A couple things about that verse. That was what he, first of all, that was what he was exhorting them, and that was what he was comforting. That was what he's encouraging them to, 
encouraging uh, these Christians to do was to walk worthy of God. Now, uh, the second thing I want to point out about that verse, walk worthy of God, is this. It does not mean that we earn um, in our own way of our own conduct, uh, our own behavior, we earn acceptance. Uh, in other words, that it's good works that provides us, uh, deems us worthy before a holy God. That's not what the verse is speaking of. Uh, we understand that uh, we are accepted of God because of Christ. Uh, all of our righteousness are filthy rags. The Bible says none of us are righteous. No, not one. We understand all of our good works. Uh, none of those things pleases God uh, or brings us acceptance to God. It was Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary that not only paid for our sins, but made us acceptable before him because we have his righteousness imputed to our account. So the, verse number 12 is not talking about that you, that you walk worthy. That That, that is what gets you standing before God. What it is exhorting, he was saying, I was exhorting these Christians. I exhorted you. I comforted you. I I charge you to walk worthy, uh, walk worthy of God. What he's talking about is how the gospel changes our conduct, our behavior. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about uh, the being, uh, any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. The Bible tells us to be holy, for I am holy is what God says in the Word of God, not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament. The truth of the matter is what, how, uh, how we believe affects how we behave. It affects our conduct. Are we perfect as Christians? Absolutely not. Uh, we're not perfect. We're far from perfect. But we serve a perfect Savior. And our standing before God is based upon what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary, his perfect life because he's the sinless son of God. However, after salvation, that doesn't mean that, okay, well, since my standing's based upon what Christ has done, then I just live however I want. I do whatever I, 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 I indulge in, in, in sinful activities, then, and I just uh, live my life. No, the Bible says you're bought with a price. You belong to him. And uh, there's some things that changes in the Christian's life when they get saved. And um, their desires should change. Their, their wanting to please God uh, is something that should be uh, the, something inside them. And Paul's saying here, I, I, he's, he's challenging them to walk worthy of God who hath called you, that their conduct matched their calling. You get what I'm saying? That their, call, that their conduct, how they behaved, matched what they were called. They were called of God into his kingdom. In other words, that their their conduct was the one that uh, uh, would be fitting of a saved individual. It matched, their, their walk matched their talk. Their walk matched what they were called. And oh, listen, uh, it, it, we're commanded in the word of God to, to be a witness and to tell others about Christ. Uh, the Bible, several places, uh, tells us that. Uh, but also we understand that many people, uh, the only Bible, and this is not something that I've thought of, and you've heard other preachers and other, uh, other Christians say this, the only Bible that some people read is our lives. Unsaved individuals, those co-workers that you're around, those neighbors that you're around, or those uh, just acquaintances that you come in contact, family members, extended family members, friends, uh, many of them will not pick up a Bible. Many of them will not watch a video uh, about uh, a devotion from the Word of God. But they will look at your life. And Paul said he exhorted them, he comforted them, he charged them that they would walk worthy of God who hath called, who had called you unto his kingdom. That they would, that their walk, their conduct, their testimony before others matched their standing before God. Not that their walk or their testimony or their good works earned them a standing before God, but because of their standing with God, being a saved, redeemed child of God, it affected their conduct. They were different than the world. And we're called to be different, Christian. We're called to be different. Uh, we're called, uh, in the Word of God, peculiar people. Not, not just strange, but we're, we're, called, we're called peculiar. We're different than the world. should be different than the world. And all that we would walk worthy uh, of our calling, work worthy of the name of being saved, a child of God. 
Does that mean we're perfect? Absolutely not. Doesn't mean that we'll ever mess up. Doesn't mean that we'll ever uh, achieve sinlessness on this earth. Uh, one of these days when we get to heaven, that'll take place in the life of the believer. But it does mean we ought to strive to be different than what we were before we come to know Christ as our Savior. And Paul said, "I, as a father would, instructing a child, uh, he said, I've exhorted you, I've comforted you, I've encouraged, I've, 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 cheerle I've been a cheerleader encouraging and, and pushing you along, and I've charged you to walk worthy, to walk worthy. Oh, that we would do that today, Christian. As many folks, as I said, would never pick up this Bible, but they're watching our lives. Let's, let's let the Lord use us today. Let our conduct be different. Our, what we believe should affect how we behave. And Paul's exhorted, exhorted those Christians to do that very thing. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day today. Our time's up here on this Friday. We come to an end of another week. And as I mentioned, I hope to see you this Sunday. This is a very special Sunday in our church's life every year. Faith Promise Sunday, Missions Emphasis Sunday. And it's very important. I hope you'll be here and I hope you'll take part. And uh, if you can't be here, I hope you'll be praying. Uh, this is a very important matter uh, for our church and I'm excited about this Sunday. I hope you are as well. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday today. And uh, Lord willing, we hope to see you this coming Sunday. God bless you.